Uh, hey guys, so today I thought I would walk you through a three blind solve that I just did. It's um, like it has a pretty advanced solution, so I thought it would be worth going over. It has a few cool concepts. It has an alternate parity elg, so like a pseudo swap other than UFUR. It has breaking into a flip, and that's actually all it has. But I can also show another concept that we could have done given that the scramble did not have parity because the scramble did have parity i'll just spoil it there it did have parity but if it didn't have parity we could have done something else which i didn't realize at the time but it would have been cool so yeah scramble's gonna be in the description i'm too lazy to like edit this but um here's a scramble so i'm just gonna walk through what i did but first, before I walk through what I did, I want to show something that I could have done if the scramble didn't have parity. So if we look at the scramble, UR and UL are switched. So like our pseudo swap is already done if we get an L that we can do UR, UL with. And oh, I wish I had more three or three. An easy, an easy L that involves this is our like N perms or F perms. Right? That switches those. Um, oh, there's another T perm. I was like, there's another easy one, T perm, right? So, if we get um, an alternate parity elk like that, then we're pogging because we just pseudo solve two edges and that's going to be great. But if we, if we don't have parity, then there's no need to do a parity elk because we don't have parity. But we can still make use of these two being switched, even if we don't have parity. What we can do is do this, um, set up to this L, which is a very easy 2e2e. It's just F2, U2 three times. And so you see that red, red green is already pseudo solved for that 2e2e. So we would just have to pseudo solve this edge into here. But I didn't realize that, so I wouldn't have done it. It's just cool. So anyway, I'm going to like walk through what I actually did. So yeah, whatever orientation it was, I picked it up. First thing I noticed, these two are switched. Alternate periog might be possible. So I'm just going to start tracing and see what happens. So corners were here to there to there. Pretty, yeah, pretty basic. Here, or no, here to there to there. Uh, yeah, just normal UFR3 style. And then our parity elg is UFL, which is good because we know an elg for that, or at least I do. And most 3x3 three three solvers probably know an elg for that. It's just an F perm, right? Right, so we can do an alternate parity elg because it's just a setup to an F perm. And then we have these two that are twisted, but... Those are, that's a good twist, so it's going to be very easy to do. And then, yeah, so we go into edges. So first we go here, and that's our buffer. And we are pseudo-swapping these, so this is not acting like the UR piece, because we've already done a pseudo-swap, so this is just acting like UF. So I chose to um, set a go break here, because it's a fast comb. And yeah, that's basically the only reason why I just like this column. So there to there, here to there, and then there to there, and then there to there. But we do have this flip, so we can break into the flip. And I would like to walk through like my thought process of breaking into the flip once I get there. So I'm just going to start doing the solve. So first column is really easy because I forced it to be like that. And then second third and then we get to the point where we can break into the flip and so a very important thing to think about when you're breaking into a flip is to force good outs you don't want to like you know break into a flip and then like give yourself a really crappy out right like you don't want to you don't want to break into a flip and then like force this on you right that's that out is bad so you want to try if you can to like give yourself a good L. And so in this case we have U or DB to either um, BL or LB, 
right? So we can choose what we want, and some of it's probably personal preference. But in my opinion, uh, this L, um, LB is way worse because it has M moves and M moves are stupid and bad. So I would much rather um, do a BL, which is just that, right? That's way easier. And also, like, I didn't think of this at the time, but the next comp that you get is also RE. So you're going from RE to RE, which is going to be better than going from, like, MU to RE, which is gross and ruins my souls. So we're going to go do that very easy one. And that also, like I said, forces this RE over, which is pretty easy. And then we just do corners. So we have first out and then... Second dog. And in the solve, I actually... I solved corners first because I thought it would be funny to, like, finish the solve off with a PLO because that's just kind of a meme. So, yeah, I twisted those. That's a pretty basic, um, like, three-blind style corner twist there. And you can finish it off with an F perm. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching if you did. Hopefully it was, like, somewhat understandable. I probably, like, rambled a lot and didn't make a lot of sense. But, I mean, I guess the moral of the story is be smart about how you break into flips so you can force good outs. And um, if if the scramble's like that, you have, like, two easy swaps on the U layer, you should consider doing, all, then consider doing an alternate parity out because, I mean, you can end yourself with a PLL, which is pretty cool. So, yeah.